So hi, hello everyone. Welcome to TerraSpatial. Today I'm going to give you an introduction to a Google Earth engine. So in the upcoming videos, I will be covering a Google Earth engine. So make sure that you don't miss subscribe to our channel. So let's get started. So introduction to Google Earth engine. So what is a Google Earth engine? A Google Earth engine is a cloud-based geospatial analysis platform that enables users to visualize and analyze the satellite image of our planet. The scientists and nonprofit uses the Earth Engine for a remote sensing research, predicting the disease outbreaks and natural resource management and more. So Google Earth Engine is a petabytes of remote sensing data sets are included. In Google Earth Engine, a platform for petabytes of geospatial data analysis and visualization platform, it stores a large volume of Earth observation satellite imageries, organizes data and makes it available for a global scale for geospatial data analysis. So these are the variety of satellite images that is included in Google Earth Engine. We can access all the satellite images for our analysis. So we have over 40 years of Landsat data and we have a Sentinel-1 image, Sentinel-2 image and a MODIS that's 36 bands and twice daily global coverage. So in Google Earth Engine, we have uh, satellite images, time-lapse uh, option, machine learning and supports Java and Python scripts. So in this address, you can able to uh, access the Google Earth Engine before you have to uh, sign up for Google Earth Engine. And after that, you can uh, access all the data and the analysis you can, you can do using the Google Earth Engine. So let us get started. Let me show you the Google Earth Engine. Now go to the browser and type Google Earth Engine. So click the first result, Google Earth Engine. So this is an official website for uh, Google Earth Engine. So let me, uh, this is a planetary platform for Earth science data and, and analysis. So you can watch video about the Google, about the Google Earth Engine. So Google Earth Engine combines multi petabytes of catalog of satellite imagery and geospatial data with the planetary scale analysis capabilities, scientists, researchers, and developers use the Google Earth Engine to detect the changes, map trends, quantify the difference on Earth's surface. The Earth Engine is now available for commercial and remains free for academic and research purposes. So it is completely free for academic and research purposes. So it is easily, easily explained here, the satellite imagery plus your algorithm. So you have your real world uh, applications. So you should uh, develop an algorithm for your own analysis. Suppose you want to extract the water bodies, you have to put certain kind of an algorithms to extract only the water bodies from your chosen study area. So our planet is changing. CO impact on Earth from a new perspective through 37 years of satellite imagery in time lapse in Google Earth. So time lapse option is also available here in our Google Earth. So it's an example of how the Earth engine can help gain insight into a petabyte scale of data sets. So I will explore it times the time lapse soon. So we have ready to use data. So public data and archives includes more than 30 years of historical imagery and scientific data sets. So updated and uh, expanded daily. It consists, it contains over 40 petabytes of geospatial data instantly available in analysis. So it can support the Python and uh, Java scripts. So scientific and humanitarian, human humanitarian uh, impacts. The scientist and nonprofit uses the Earth Engine for remote sensing research, predicting the disease outbreaks, natural resource management, and more. 
So we will see the case studies too. Now let me show you the platforms. So Google Earth Engine, this is a platform section. The Google Earth Engine is a computing platform that allows a user to run a geospatial analysis on Google infrastructure. There are several ways to interact with this platform. One is a code editor, and uh, second one is a explorer. It's a lightweight, uh, lightweight web app for exploring our data and running a simple analysis. And client library provides uh, Python and JavaScripts. And uh, continue reading for OK. So we have one option is to we have code editor platform. Using codes, you can able to extract your information and perform your analysis. So different parts of this uh, Google Earth uh, engine. So we have help button, run script, save, search for data, script manager. So zoom options. Okay. Second is an explorer platform. The explorer is a simple web uh, interface to Earth engine that allows us to visualize the data and public data catalogs. So you have to sign in to use this uh, to run simple analysis and uh, save and export your results. So client library provides JavaScript and uh, Python functions for Earth Engine. You can use them to build a custom application and develop Earth Engine codes locally using Java and Python. Okay. So we have another option called uh, Nightlight Trends in uh, Google Earth Engine. So now let us go to the data sets that is available here. So let's view the different data sets that is available in uh, Google Earth Engine. So planetary scales platform for Earth science data and analysis. Okay. So we have different uh, data sets. We have climate and weather data, weather data sets. In that we have surface temperature, climate, and uh, atmospheric and weather data in the section called climate and weather uh, section. So in imagery, we have a Landsat image, Sentinel image, and uh, MODIS, and high resolution imagery. So in third section, that is geophysical, geophysical, we have terrain, that is dim data, digital elevation model, and land cover data. And uh, terrain data, and cropland data, and other geophysical data. So the other geophysical data, the data from other satellite imagery sensors is available in Earth Engine. It includes night, uh, nighttime imagery from Defense Meteorological Satellite Program Operation Line Scan System. So we have a option called nighttime imagery. So which has a collected imagery of nighttime lights at approximately one kilometer resolution continuously hence 1992. So now let me either explain other platforms, other uh, things. Now let me show you the time lapse option that is available in Google Earth. So this is the time lapse time lapse uh, section. So this is Columbia Glacier. So let us see what is the time lapse here. So you can see the retreat of glacier and uh, advancement of glacier using the time lapse image. Now let me show you another uh, things. So let us see the urban uh, growth in China. Now you can able to see the significant urban growth in China. So you can see that. Let me show you once again. So there's a significant urban developments from. Let me stop this.
So we have data ranging from 1984 to 2020. The significant urban growth has been uh, took in China. Now let me explain other parts that is case studies. So we have different case studies have done using a Google Earth Engine. So global forest cover changes. So the Earth Engine surveyed over a decade of global uh, tree cover extent loss and gains. So this is uh, the map for that. The green indicates the forest extent. So Global Forest Watch. So it is an initiative, uh, initiative of World Resource Institute and a dynamic online forest monitoring system designed it to enable a better management of conservation. Global Forest Watch uses uh, Forest uh, Watch uses the Earth Engine to measure and visualize the changes to the world's forest. The user can synthesize the data from over the past decades and receive the alerts about the possible new threats in real uh, near real time. So it's in a, one of the feature of this Google Earth Engine. So tiger habitat monitoring, malaria risk mapping, and uh, yes, we have pretty lot of case studies in. Uh, we can, it can be done using Google Earth Engine. The global surface water. So we use Earth Engine to develop a high resolution maps of global surface water current changes, seasonality, reoccurrence, and transitions. So a study was published in Nature Analysis of Landsat image collected over the past three decades to identify both permanent and seasonal water bodies. Understanding these changes is vital for ensuring security of global water supply for agricultural industries and human consumption. So you can study the water, global surface water. Now let me sign in to, uh, sign in to my Google Earth Engine. So click the sign in option. So now we have logged into uh, Google Earth Engine Code Editor. So you, all you have to need, uh, all you have uh, need is to you need a Google uh, Gmail account and sign into your Google Earth Engine. May it may take so 24 hours to uh, receive the notification through your mail. So let me search by Landsat. So now we can see that the different Landsat images are available here. So USGS Landsat image, Landsat 4 image, Landsat 5, 7, 8. So we have a lot of Landsat images. So we have a lot of Landsat images. So now let me choose any one of the satellite image. So let me choose this. So we have so reflectance. Let me go back. So let me choose this Landsat uh, 8, the USGS Landsat 8 collection. So now let me you can see the description about this image, the data set availability, the date, and data set provider, the bands. We have different bands that is involved in this satellite image. So image properties, so we have a description, bands and image properties. We have an entire detail about this image. So let us import. So now let me close this. So you have to wait for some time. It is uh, being loaded into our Google Earth engine. So the Landsat 8 is taking a longer time. Let me show you another options. And uh, let me insert uh, SRTM dem. Search by SRTM. So I click. So now this is a SRTM digital elevation model. So we have NASA SRTM digital elevation model of 20 centimeter. So let me click that. So we have description about the SRTM, different bands, the band that is used, films, views, citations. So click the import section. Now let me close this option.
So now you can see that uh, the SRTM DEM has been imported into our Earth engine. So it is loading. So let's zoom. So the DEM has been imported into our Earth engine. So. So you can see that as a global level dem has been imported into earth engine global level so it can perform variety of analysis using this option you can even extract the entire world's uh, that is our water bodies using this options So you can also download this dem from this earth engine. I will show you in my upcoming videos and make sure that you subscribe to our channel. Don't miss anything. So in this video, I have shown you how to uh, give you the introduction to Google Earth Engine and uh, shown you the web platforms and different options that is available in Earth Engine. So make sure that you subscribe to our channel. So in upcoming videos, I will introduce the Google Earth Engine, its options, and uh, many uh, other things. So subscribe. Don't miss any uh, contents from our channel. So thanks for watching.